Hi everyone, can you hear me? Hi Dawn. Okay, I can see Rachel saying can hear me, Ms Maureen is saying can hear me. I have to get my glasses back on because I can't see. Anna Blakeman is saying I can hear you. Rhonda, hi. Nancy, all saying. So you can all, loud and clear, brilliant. So we've got a few minutes to go yet. Yeah. What have you all been up to with your Sunday? Hi, Barbara. Vicky's saying, just been doing a bit of hoovering, but can hear you. That's great. Tanya, hi, Tanya, can hear me. I've been making some card kits to send out to customers that shopped with me in July and use my Stamping Up host code. So I've been putting together kits today in readiness to send out. Barbecue in the rain, oh no, I, I must admit it, it's been mostly dry here but every now and again we have like a downpour and then it goes dry again. It's weird and warm Make, Sally's making cards and out for a walk. Hi, Carol. Happy Sunday, she's saying to everybody. Anna is saying, I've just finished making rolled paper flowers for the first time. Oh, they're good fun, aren't they, Anna? Hi, Caroline. So the blog post has gone up this morning with everybody's cards that sent me a photograph for the card sketch number three. So I don't know whether you've all seen that or not, but I've just discovered, despite the fact that I save all the photographs with everybody's names, on my blog, the gallery, the only gallery that it seems to let me use, won't let me put the blasted names on, so none of your names are on there. But at least all your photographs are there and I'll work on it. Hi Nancy in Kansas, USA. Hi Lisa, happy Sunday. Hi Ellen. Same Alison, sun comes out, then it chucks it down, then it goes dry and comes back out again and goes kind of really warm. Hi Priscilla. You can't see me at the moment. No, you can't. Sorry, I'm going to I'm going to um, change that. Although I've got no makeup on, so it might be a bit scary. Um, Rhonda saying I'm from Madison. Okay. Barbara saying no matter Ashley like being. Hi, Angel. Hi, Mandy G. Yes, I am fine, thank you. Hope you are too. I'm just going to flip this. So now you should be able to see me and this picture. Oh, just got a shiver then. 
So it's, hi Christine, so it's just about five o'clock and that's what time I normally usually try and start, normally try to keep on time. Hi Sheila. Hi Charlotte Keller. So today is going to be, hi Marlene, is going to be a Canvas workspace for computer. Hi Thea. Everyone's jumping on now, which is great. So yeah, so Canvas workspace for computer today. And it's going to be another one of those Pinterest inspired sessions. That's what I like to call it anyway. So hopefully you should be able to see on my screen now these two designs, the home sweet home and then the one that says Morrison and I've just put mine and Hannah's name in it. Let me move that out of the way. There's something in the way that you can't see. Hi Maria. Good afternoon. Hi Rhonda, it's 11 a.m. here, okay. What we are now, five, okay. Hi Mags. Yeah, I'm well, I think everybody else is. Maria from Caffili. Corinne, hi all. So just to double check, can you just all, or somebody, let me know that you can see the home sweet home on your screens? It looks as though you can, that's what I can see, but I just like to double check. It's cut off the top. Okay. Doesn't look as though it's cut off the top for me, but I've just zoomed out a little. It's basically, it's you, what, I'm looking at it on YouTube as well, and you should be able to see home in big black letters and then home suite written across it, and then underneath it, Morrison, and then it just says Ashley and Hannah. And getting yes can see, yes can see, brilliant. So I know it's, as I say, I'm this system I use, it shows me a screenshot of what you're seeing, but I also have my phone on, on as a backup logged into my YouTube and I can see it there and it all seems to be fine. Mandy, Vicky's saying it's okay now, right, okay, fab. So I'm gonna get rid of that. I'm gonna go to Canvas. Yeah, everybody's saying it's all looking fine now. So now we should all be able to see my canvas workspace screen. So this actually is, is quite a simple project. It might look complicated, but it's actually quite simple. So it's three minutes past five, so I'm going to make a start. Now my mail's decided to pop up for some reason, so let's close that down. Let's quit that. Just going to quit everything that I don't need. Okay, we should be back. It, there's a, a little bit of a delay. Once you're probably seeing me get rid of the email now, which I've already done, but in a few minutes you should be able to be back on my canvas screen. Oh, hang on, it's all going horribly wrong. Just hang on a minute. And it was all sorted and now it's all gone wrong. But you know, it wouldn't be a Sunday, would it, without things going wrong with me? Right, I think that's about the best we're gonna get now. Right, I'm gonna make a start. So, Canvas Workspace for Computer. The first thing I'm going to do, I'm just gonna do the Home Sweet Home first. 
And then I've got another one that I've um, not shown you, but I'm going to try and do as well. So I'm going to come to the text icon, click once on the page, and I'm going to type the word home, excuse me, in capital letters. And then click away, just so the word shows up on the page. And just to hopefully so that you can see it better. Is it Vicky? Oh, OK, thanks. That's good to know, because sometimes I look at something and there's like a few second delay. OK, so I've got the word home and I'm just dragging it out to fit within the width of my 12 inch mat. And then I'm going to come back. In fact, before I do anything, with it with the word home selected, I'm going to come up to the fonts and I'm going to change it to impact because I think this kind of design works better when your main word, you know, is nice and bold. And impact, I think I've said this before, I'm sure is a font that is readily available on both Windows and Mac. So obviously, because I'm on Mac, I like to be able to show something that you have on your computer as well. So we've got the word home in capitals and the font I've chosen is impact. So now I'm going to come back to the text and select it and just left click in a space down here on the bottom of the page. And then this time in lowercase letters, I'm going to type the word home, then hit enter and then sweet and hit enter. Now, because I've just used impact, it's automatically going to create the home and suite in impact, which I don't want. I'm going to use a different font. So I'm going to choose about love, I think. I've used this before and this is available from dafont.com. Hi Leslie, don't worry I've literally only just started, been chatting for five minutes. So now I'm going to drag the word home suite to make it bigger because I want to fit it within here and I'm just going to kind of drag it by a corner and then drag it out a little. This is one of those fonts, as I say, I have used this before. Hi, Sue. And it's one of those fonts that if I just choose my magnifying glass and just zoom in, you can see that the letters overlap, although they're not welded. And if we tried to cut this, it would cut all this into bits and we don't want that. We want the word because it's like a a handwritten font, if you like, and the H is running into the O and the O is running into the M. We want to weld all this together. So let me just zoom back out a little bit. So I've got home suite. As I typed it, I'm going to come to the edit icon. I'm going to come down to the bottom and I'm going to weld. Now, if I just zoom back in on here again, you'll see that the H has welded into the O and the O is welded onto the M. And that's really what you want. This kind of thing is mainly done in vinyl and you put it on maybe, you know, like wooden or metal signs and people kind of hang them on the walls indoors or they hang them outside the house. So you don't want the letters being separated because the blade would follow the H and then before when there was a line here it would cut and then it would come round and cut again. So you want this to all be welded to give a nice effect. So let me just zoom back out. So now I've welded this. I want to position it so it fits across the word home but that it's cut out Hi Christine, if I'm missing any comments I'll come back in a few minutes, I keep seeing things popping up. 
Maria Crook, yes, about love it's called. So I've got impact for the word home. I've got home sweet typed in lowercase in about love and I've welded that. So the first thing I'm going to do is with the home suite selected, now I've welded it, I'm still on the edit tab, I'm going to come down to the bottom to offset and I'm going to use a spacing of 0 0.8 and I'm going to say create an offset line only around the outer edge. So in other words, this box at the bottom needs to be ticked. Marlene, yes, it will be recorded and you'll be able to go back and watch it on my YouTube channel. That's fine. So 0 0.08 outward spacing and create an offset around the outer edge. And I'm going to say OK. So now if I click, you'll, you'll see that I've got double lines. So I've got my original word lines and then I've now got this bigger line, which is the offset. Now, again with this, you can position it in the middle of your word. You can put it down at the bottom. You can put it at the top. You can put it wherever you want. A lot of the times, these things go through the middles of words. But sometimes when you type in a word, it's not. it doesn't look right to put your other font let's say across the middle sometimes you know depending on the main word the, the word that's all in capitals sometimes it's better to have your other word near the bottom so we'll do this one kind of centrally ish so what I'm going to do just to make it easier to see I'm going to select the word home and I'm going to fill it with black and you can see straight away that the word home is in front, my other word has disappeared. And we're going to use subtract. And to use subtract, we need it the other way around. We need the word home on the bottom and then the home suite, which is in the lowercase, to, to be at the front. So the easiest way is to come to the layers panel and click on one of the texts and see what you get. Now I can see that these two words are separate. So I'm going to select them both by holding the shift key down and choosing both. I'm going to drag them up to the top. In fact, I think they're already a group. Hang on, let me do it the other way around so I can see what I'm doing. I'm going to send that one down to the bottom. What have we got going on here? Have we got a group? Let's group those. Oh, they're already a group. Okay. Let me just turn off that a minute. This is what I want. So they are already a group. Okay. So I'm going to ungroup them, I think, for now. Bring back this letter and send this to the back, or is it to the bottom, to the back. I want to fill in my other words so that you can see them. That's better. Okay, so we've got home at the back and home suite on top. Now sometimes, when you try to do this, it doesn't work. And it, it's sometimes because these two words are separate. So I'm going to try it and see what happens. And if it doesn't work, we're going to have to come back to the original words, which are down here at the bottom, and shuffle them together. But let's just try and see what happens. So I'm going to select the home and the home suite, which is in red. I'm going to come back to the edit icon and I'm going to hit subtract. Okay, that's worked. So that's what we want. We want the offset word punching out of the big main letters. So now I'm going to select this home suite and I'm going to colour it in red. 
and then I'm going to bring it up. And these words should now sit inside. And the reason that they sit inside with a little bit of a white, like a halo around them, is because we did the 0 0.08 offset, and it was the offset that we used to subtract from the word home. So does that make sense for everybody? Well, I just have a quick slurp of my drink. Okay, so Charlotte's saying it does. Christine's saying very nice. It looks cool. You do some great things. Ashley is Robert saying, oh, thank you, Robert. Ellen is saying yes, thumbs up. I can see. Makes sense. Clever. Okay, so Maria's saying yes as well. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to select both of these and just move them down the page a little. So if you wanted... Um, Leslie's saying, love the font, love the process fab. Oh, great. Thank you. Um, Mags is saying, yes, makes sense. Okay, so Marcia's saying, this makes sense. Never thought about using the offset. Ah, you see, little tricks. Okay, so as I say, this type of thing is mainly used for making signs. Uh, Carol's saying, hands up. Who says yes when Ashley says, does that make sense? <laughs> <laughs> Anna's saying awesome, Lisa Davis giving me a thumbs up, brilliant. Yes, the home is going to be in a lot of pieces, no. <laughs> okay, the home is going to be as it is, yes, correct Vicky, but this is what I'm going to show you how to do. Um, let me just get to my undo. So, if you were to cut this in vinyl, which is, as I say, how most of these signs are made. That's what I'm going to say, explain now, Mandy. And obviously, you, you're going to want to be able to line up your home suite with your big home letters. So the best way to do this is to come to your basic shapes and grab a square. And I'm just going to size the square down. You can make it any size you want. So at the moment, it's just under an inch, okay? I'm going to right-click and duplicate it. And I'm just going to position them. This isn't vital. You can put this anywhere. I'm just going to position them so that they're positioned within this whole span of the word home. I'm going to select them both, so I've got one selected. I'm holding my shift key down on my keyboard and clicking on the other to select them both. I'm going to align them both, either top or bottom. It's entirely up to you. I'm going to align mine by the top. And then with them both selected, I'm going to right click and make them a group. And I'm going to fill them with black, okay? So this is what I've got. Two squares grouped together, coloured in black, positioned within the width of the word home. Now I'm going to duplicate them and I'm going to create another set in red because we've got on the screen here, we've got effectively one word in black made up of a set of letters and another word in red made up of two words. So I'm going to select these two black squares at the top, right click, make a duplicate. I'm going to colour the second set in red so that you can see them. And I'll put the red fill on as well. 
and I'm going to select both and I'm going to align them up centrally on the horizontal and on the vertical. So basically the two red squares are sat directly on top of the black squares. I'm going to select the red squares, hold my shift key down on my keyboard and select my red words. And with both those selected, I'm going to say, right click and group. And then I'm just gonna move those out of the way so you can see what I've done. They move as a group, okay? So I'm gonna come into the layers panel. Here's my group. I'm going to turn them off for a minute so they both disappear. So now I'm left with the black elements. So I'm going to just drag an imaginary box around both. So the two black squares are a group and the word home is a group. And I'm going to right click and hit group. So again, these now move as a group, yeah? Then I'm going to come back to the layers panel and I'm going to turn on the red layers. Let me just see what you're saying. Alice is saying, um, hi everyone, I'm on, we'll catch up, that's fine. Rhonda saying, I'm learning, just getting started, confused a little bit. Don't worry Rhonda, you know, this if you're only literally just getting started, this may be. I wouldn't say it's too advanced. It might just need a little bit of thinking about, but I've got loads of videos on my channel. There's even, a, um, they're all categorised into playlists, Rhonda, and there's a beginner's playlist. And then there's also a playlist called Live. So all the live sessions that I do are all under one playlist as well. So you can always go back and look in there. So Alice is saying, Ashley, please remind us to check the like button. Okay, yeah, please make sure you hit the like button underneath the video. That's the, the place to do it. Not just the thumbs up in the chat, that doesn't do anything. It's got to be the actual like button directly under the YouTube video. And that helps the algorithm apparently, and it helps YouTube push the videos out to more people so that they can find me and us, our little community that we have going on here on a Sunday. And um, it helps more people learn. Okay, so Vicky's just said something and then said, okay, ignore it, it's still there. So what I should have now is when I click on the red, I've got the two red squares and the home suite grouped together. And then if I just move that down out of the way and I click on the black, I've got the two black squares and the black word saying home group together. And this is basically how you line up your vinyl when you're cutting it. So what you would do to send this to your machine and cut it in black and red vinyl you can leave it exactly as it is, but remember your scan and cut machine won't see color. So the way I would do it is I would select the red and just bring them down to the bottom of the page and I'd move the black section up at the top so that when you get this into your scan and cut machine, you'll be able to see this word and you'll be able to see this word down here separate. And then what you do is, you choose the red bit and say delete. Make sure you save it into your machine straight away as soon as you get it in your machine. And then once you've got it on the mat on your machine, you can cut these in any order. So I would probably choose to cut the black first. So what I would do is I would choose this home suite with its two red boxes and just delete it. And then I would load my mat with black vinyl and cut what you can see here in black. So it would cut the H-O-M-E and the two black squares. Then I would put transfer tape on top of those. 
Then I would go back, call the design up on the machine again that I'd saved into the machine, delete the black sections and cut the red sections. And then again, apply the transfer tape. And then I would put the black section down first on say, if, it, if this was going to be a wooden sign, I would put the black section down onto my wooden sign first remove the transfer tape so I'm left with the words home. You can all, you can usually easily peel away the um, black squares but what you can do if you're a bit nervous about doing it, position the words with your black squares onto your wooden sign and then just get a craft knife or, or a pair of scissors before you burnish this down and cut the squares away, then at least you've got the rest of the word positioned in place. Then, once you've cut your red vinyl and you've got your transfer tape on, I would only remove the transfer tape from the red section where the red boxes are. So the red bits will be the only bits that have got sticky on them. And then the home suite would still have its backing tape on. And then position your red squares over your black squares that are on your wooden sign so that they align exactly like so. Once you've got them positioned, you can then lift up this section from the bottom and remove the backing paper and it will fold and sit into place. Does that make sense? It's not easy to try and explain how to do this without physically showing you. And I've just got itchy eyes, so just give me a minute while I just itch my eye. So basically what you're doing, the black boxes are an alignment aid. So you put your black word down with your black boxes onto your sign and then you bring the red section, only remove the backing from your transfer tape off this top section to expose the red bits, the sticky bits of the red bit, if that makes sense. And then only this bit will be sticky, so that will help you line it up better. And then once you've got your two red squares on top, you can then lift this section here up from the bottom and pull your transfer tape away and then just start to burnish it down from the top. And because these two red boxes are lined on top of the black squares, this will drop into place. And then all you need to do is just get yourself something like um, a little craft knife or, you know, like a weeding pick or something. And you'll, you should be able to easily peel these red and black squares away from your project. Um, Leslie's saying have to oh hang on I've missed some um, hang on I need to go back because I've missed some comments so face 0923 has just got here that's fine it'll be recorded so you can always go back um, Philip is saying, are you going to cut this? I've not got any plans to cut it, to be fair, at the moment. I was just showing you how, you know, to make this type of thing. I've not got anything to put it on, to be fair, unless I just left it on its transfer backing. Maybe I'll try and do a video tomorrow and just record it and put it up on YouTube. Ellen is saying... Do you send all the words to the machine at the same time? Ellen, as I said, you send the whole file to the machine at the same time and save it, but separate it so that you can see on your mat where it is because your mat won't see colour, remember? And when you see it on the mat on the machine, it'll all just look black. So if you separate it and you know that this part is down at the bottom and this part's up at the top, and then save it into your machine, then delete the red sections, cut the black sections, then call the file back up, 
delete the black sections and cut the red sections. Um, Barbara's saying, ah, oh, that looks foolproof. Leslie's saying, have to watch the video a few times so it sinks in. Charlotte's saying, I'm close but think I need to just play with it. The squares function as registration marks, right? Exactly, the squares are only there to help you line this second set of words in this gap so you get them nice and neat because if you align the red squares on top of the black squares because this is a group the words will drop into this space neatly should say foolproof for me genius Leslie's saying well done to Charlotte yep yeah, that's fine okay understand now thank you yeah and then obviously because it's vinyl, yeah, when you send it to your machine, you put your half cut on. Correct, that's right, Christine. You could cut this in card, but this type of thing is really mainly cut in vinyl. So yeah, if you're cutting in vinyl, put your half cut on from within your wrench settings, and then whatever you do, Remember to go back and turn half cut off because if you then go to cut paper or card, you may wonder why it's not cutting properly. So Charmaine saying, hello, I would love to do this. Give it a go, Charmaine, and see. So what I'll do, I'll separate these and I will save this file to my desktop and then if I get time tomorrow, I'll try and cut it in vinyl and do just a little quick video just as a, a pre-record and upload it to follow on. So I'm going to export the FCM file. I'll catch up with your comments in a minute. I'm just going to call it home sweet home and I'll save it on my desktop for tomorrow okay so let me just see what people are saying so Mandy's saying I'm following it all but just a bit unsure of the method to actually place it on wood slate etc I've only used one colour cut a vinyl before a video would be brilliant okay I think if you go to my channel Mandy once you actually within my YouTube channel there's a search box and if you type vinyl into the search box anything with the word vinyl in the title or description should come up I can't remember whether I've done two coloured vinyl in the past or not to be fair because it's funny because I only dawned on me. I've been on YouTube six years. So that's a lot of videos really, isn't it? And you forget what you've done. But it's there's a search box on my channel. And if you're looking for something specifically, just go and type a word in there. So like if you want to know about fabric, put fabric. If you want to know about vinyl and anything with that word in its title or description should come up that's on my channel. Maria, yes, I've done vinyl videos, that's what I'm saying. Just go to my channel and type vinyl in the search box and they'll come up. Um, Leslie's saying, no, Tanya, you just have to get the blade depth for vinyl. I've obviously missed something. Oh, okay, so Tanya's asking, is there a half cut on the CM300? No, correct, Leslie. Le that's right, Leslie's correct, Tanya. You just have to... Um, Use the test cut facility, and again, every machine has got a test cut facility. And again, there are videos on my channel showing you how to do a test cut. It puts a little tiny square, circle, or triangle, whichever one you choose, onto your mat, and then you cut. You you select cut, and it will only ever cut a test cut first if you've got a test cut shape on your mat. And that way, you can get to um, set your blade. With vinyl, it generally only needs a very low blade, maybe a one, one and a half, two, something like that. But you need to do a test cut because with vinyl, you're only cutting through the top layer 
of the vinyl, the colour itself, you're not cutting through right through to the back. You want to be able to leave the backing in place when you take the words away. Charlotte's saying, lol, I would probably need Valium at the end of the process. No, Charlotte, you wouldn't, honestly. I'll try and cut it tomorrow. I've got nothing to put it on, but I'll see if I can maybe just put it on a piece of card or if I can just leave it on the transfer tape and show you how to line you up, something like that. So watch this space tomorrow. I'll look, thank you. I watched the one where you stuck one colour vinyl on a slate heart. Yeah, I've done others. That was probably only last year. I've got others, Mandy, going back, you know, several years. Tanya saying, okay, thank you. Didn't think there was. Christine saying, it could be put on a frame, wall, journal, fabric, wood, anything. Yeah. You could even put it on card and then frame the card. Do you know what I mean? But this type of thing that you see all over Pinterest are normally going on some kind of sign, usually wooden signs or glass frames, that kind of thing. Right, so I've saved that one, so I can get rid of all that now. So another way that you can use this, and this can be a little bit hit and miss sometimes, but we're going to give it a go and see what happens. So I'm going to go to my, um, what should we do? I know, I'm going to go to my fonts, and I'm going to put in capitals, I love and hit enter. I'm going to right click and duplicate that word and then select it to get the text box back and I'm going to put dogs. I'm going to just position them both near each other for now and I'm going to change the font to impact and I'm going to drag it out and make it bigger. Now, this time, I'm going to line the two words up centrally. So I'm going to come to the Edit tab and come down here to Edit and Centre Horizontal. Um, let me see what you're saying because I've missed something. Sounds good. Ashley, would you help out with the project I'm working on? Would that be a one-to-one -one class? I'll gladly pay you help. Yes. What is the project, Karen? Vicky's saying you can use heat transfer vinyl, HTV, yeah, also to put on fabric or a T-shirt, yeah, and then obviously you've got to mirror it, haven't you, if you're using heat transfer vinyl, because if you're using words, it'll be backwards if you don't, so you would mirror your design then. So, yeah, you can use this for all sorts of things, obviously, but I think if you look on Pinterest and you type in, it, I think it's called knockout text or knockout the, um, what do you call it, the technique. So if you look on Pinterest and type knockout vinyl knockout, something like that, or knockout vinyl, you'll find all that kind of thing com comes up and it's mostly on signs, but yeah, you can put it on anything. You can cut it in any type of medium you want. Uh, Karen saying, I'm trying to use a 12 by 20 format and it's not working correctly, making ghosts. Okay, um, yeah, it, it should be something that we can sort out within a one-to-one -one Zoom class, most definitely. Um, I don't know if you saw my blog post last night, but I've actually had a cancellation for tomorrow. But if that's too soon, if you just message me and let me know what you're trying to do um, when you want the class, we can organise that. Uh, Charmaine is saying, could you sell a design for lazy people like me? Oh, could I sell a design? Um, I'll have to look at the copyright on the font because I think it, I'm not sure what the, what the copyright is. Some of them only say for personal use. So I'm not sure but on that one, Charmaine. This is why I like to show you how to do it yourself. But um, I could probably... Hmm, there's nothing in Canvas that we could use in Canvas Workspace. 
You'd have to leave that one with me, Charmaine. I'm sorry. So Vicky's saying, my heat transfer vinyl goes on right side up, same as sign vinyl. Really? Usually with heat transfer vinyl, it has a shiny surface and a dull matte backing and you cut it in mirror. Um, uh, Karen's saying, okay. Marcia's saying, I have a question. What did you just do to align the dogs with I love? Okay, Marcia, we'll do it again. that's a good point okay right so for Marcia let's move the word dogs out of the way so Marcia I'm going to select both words by dragging an imaginary box around everything I'm going to come over to the edit tab and then I'm going to come down here where it says align and I'm going to align them using the middle icon on the top row of the alignment icons which are here so this one so that puts them centrally together. Now I'm going to left click on the page to deselect and then what I'm going to do is either select the words dogs and use the up arrows on the keyboard to scoot it up or the easiest way I do it is just move the dogs up into place even though they might you know, be off centered and then select them and center them again that way. Just depends how you work. So Marcia, is that okay? Does that help? Christine, usually heat transfer vinyl is shiny on the front and then what if you let's say you were using a purple vinyl and it was heat transfer vinyl. This is the easiest way for me to try and explain it to myself. You'd have a, sh a very shiny surface on one side and on the other side you would see a matte purple colour, okay? And that is normally how you know that it's heat transfer vinyl. So what you would normally do is you would put the shiny side down on your mat and therefore if you were typing words or something, a shape that it didn't matter whether it was mirrored or flipped, you would mirror the text. In other words, you'd cut the words backwards because you're cutting into the back of the heat transfer vinyl. And then that way, when you weed all the outline away that you don't need and you're left, if, you know, if it was this, I love dogs, let's say, when you turn it back over the right way around so it's shiny side up, the words read correctly, and then you put that on your garment or your bag or your fabric or whatever you're putting it on, and you'd iron effectively onto like the shiny side. So you, um, some heat tra transfer vinyl lets you iron directly onto the shiny surface, but I'm always a bit nervous about doing it. So I would put a cloth over the shiny surface and then iron it or press it with your heat press or whatever you're using. So a normal vinyl, so vinyl that you'd put on, on you know, things for inside your house or external vinyl, let's say, or washable vinyl, is normally a colour on the top and it normally has a white or a cream paper backing. And that's how you can normally tell the difference between the two different types of vinyl. So I hope that helps. You could put it on an artist's paper, so if you want to use it in a frame later, you can put, yeah, um, the font that you use for personal use, I've just downloaded it. Um, so Angel's saying that the font that I used is only for personal use, so therefore I wouldn't be able to sell it, Charmaine. Okay, so let's go back to the I Love Dogs. So. I've got the dog's word, which is one word, slightly overlapping the I love and this centred to each other because we did that down here, yeah? I'm going to select both. And when I, when I say I'm going to select both for anybody that's new, I'm left clicking up here somewhere above the design and I'm just left clicking and dragging. And that kind of drags out this purpley blue 
what I call an imaginary box. And once I've got past everything, I'll let go. And then I know that these two are selected. Then still on the edit tab, I'm going to come all the way down to the bottom and I'm going to hit weld. And I've now welded the words dogs to I love. So now I'm going to come back to my text and I'm going to come up to the fonts and I'm going to find a font. So what's Vicky saying? Yeah, I was wrong. I do have to cut it in reverse on the dull side. It's been, yeah. Okay, that's fine. As, as I say, Vicky, I'm not an expert. I only can know what I know and I don't know everything. So, that, you know, there was a possibility that you might have some kind of vinyl that you didn't have to do it. But from experience, regular vinyl that you put on home decor or on things outside is normally coloured on the front and has a, a white or a cream paper backing. And heat transfer vinyl is very, very shiny on the top and on the back. It's the dull matte colour of the colour that you can see through the shine. And that's kind of how you know the difference. And if you're cutting heat transfer vinyl and you're cutting words, you've got to mirror your words. OK, so that hopefully sorts that out. So let's go back to the fonts. And I'm trying to find, here it is. This font is called Can Dog and it's from Da Font again. And I'm just going to type a capital letter A and hit OK. And because I chose that font, I've got this dog. And again, if you knew, this is a dingbat font. In other words, whatever letter you type gives you a little picture. But it's not a picture as in an image. It's... A font picture but again on my channel if you type in dingbats you'll find all the videos I've done relating to dingbats and I looked at this earlier and this was capital letter A so this is why I'm choosing it. Barbara's saying not done vinyl yet so good to know about text reverse okay Leslie's saying ditto Barbara okay so just to try and make this easier, I'm going to fill in the words again with black. So I'm coming up here next to the paint bucket and I'm just going to fill the words with black. I'm going to choose my dog and I'm just going to make it red just to make it easier to see. Yeah, there's the cat one as well. And then there's this dog one, Leslie. So you could do this for, you know, either cat or dog lover. Uh, Philip's saying the only vinyl I have cut is the pattern you can put on your scan and cut and love it. Mm, okay. When you download a font, it often comes with a license file that says if you can sell it or not. Oh, okay, Vicky, I'll go and have a look. Thank you. But I, I had a feeling it was for personal use only, the one I used before. I've made a garden sign in vinyl. And a basic t-shirt in HTV, it's great fun. Good. Okay, so dogs. I'm going to position my red dog over my black words. Again, I'm only doing this by eye. It's not for anything in particular. If you were putting this on a sign or a frame or whatever, size your words up accordingly. But I want my dog. I might make it a little bit smaller. Let's just see so that we can see more of the words. And again, this is one of them where you can play about with where you position it. You know, do you position it in the middle? Do you position it to the side? Do you put it up at the top? Do you know, I'm just going to kind of go with central-ish for now. With the dog selected, I'm going to right click and make a duplicate and just bring the duplicate out of the way. And then I'm just going to bring my other one out of the way just for now, because you might be able to see it better on the map rather than up here. So with one of the dogs selected, I'm still under the edit tab and I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to come to the offset 
And because I used 0 0.08 before, it's remembered what I've used. And I'm going to stick with that. But again, play with these settings if you want a bigger gap around it, make it more. If you want it less, make it less. This is just kind of what I've tended to use. So I've got 0 0.08 outward. And again, I'm making sure that create an offset line only around the outer edge is selected. In this particular case, it's a solid shape anyway, so it doesn't really matter. But it's kind of good to get in the habit of just, you know, either ticking this if you need an outline or unticking it if you needed, you know, middles of things doing as well. So I'm going to say OK. So you can see now I've got my red original dog and then I've got this black outline which is the offset so I'm going to get rid of the original one I'm just going to hit delete on my keyboard and then this is the offset I'll just color this one with blue for now just so you don't get confused and I'm just going to position this somewhere over the letters okay but it has to be on top I'm going to select both and then I'm going to come down on the edit tab and use subtract. And that's punched the offset, so the bigger shape dog, out of my words. And then I'm going to bring this one in and position it in the gap. Now, if you don't want the white kind of halo around, I'm just seeing if there was any comments, sorry. If you don't want the white halo around, let's just undo all that and get back to the two that were the same size. So these two dogs, let's just double check. 5.61 wide, 5.61 wide. So these two are exactly the same size. Okay, so if you don't want the white kind of halo effect around, don't do the offset. Position whatever it is you're putting on top. Select both. Come down and hit subtract. And then because the dog that we used to punch out is the same size as this one, this one will fit in exactly. So you've got no white halo around. So it depends how you want to do it. Alison saying, I made my own personalised Christmas jumper in gold sparkle on a cream plain jumper. I saved a fortune. Also used wine bottles with lights and vinyl personalised. Yeah, brilliant. Vinyl really is. I mean, these electronic cutting machines, the scan and cut and, you know, things like the puzzles and the craft robo and the cricket and all that. They're basically all derived from vinyl sign cutting machines. So the type of machines that you see, you know, when you go and see signs on vans or above shop doors, that if they're vinyl signs, obviously, they will have all have been cut on a bigger version than our electronic home cutting machines. So they're made to cut vinyl, basically. So... And vinyl is so, excuse me, um, you know, so fairly reasonable to get hold of and comes in all sorts of, you know, different designs. So you've got like indoor vinyl, which if you use like the brand Oracle, I think is called Oracle 631. If you use a vinyl that you want to be washable or you want to put outside, and again, if you're using Oracle, I think that's 651, but then Cricut sell vinyl. Um, this pattern vinyl now, Cricut do vinyl that's patterned, so not just a plain colour. And then this heat transfer vinyl. So there's so many different types of vinyl on the market now that you can use for anything. So, you know, heat transfer vinyl for clothing, fabric, bags, that kind of stuff, like Alison's saying, and then home decor vinyl for inside projects, vinyl that you can put on outdoor projects. There's even, is it is it called decal vinyl that you can cut and put on your, on your 
windows, um, you know, like at Christmas time and decorate your windows up with snowflakes and then it's just easy to peel off. There's all types of vinyl. So let's see where we're going. Um, good morning, I'm so late. Don't worry, Jeanette, it'll be recorded and it'll be all on YouTube later. Maria's saying, sounds fab, Alison. Yeah, it does. And like you say, personalised things for Christmas, definitely you can save a fortune just by, if you've got the vinyl and you've got a plain garment. Do you have to use a font for the dog or could you use a PDF shape and trace it? You can make your own shapes. I'm just using dingbats because I'm lazy, Leslie. And if there's a dingbat shape in the shape that I want, I'll use it rather than faffing around doing the auto trace. But you could you could just use a shape from the basic shapes. You could put a heart in. You know, you could just pick a heart from within here and use a heart instead of the dog. But yeah, anything that you can actually trace and make into a cut file, you can then use to do this technique. Christine saying also can make many Halloween costumes and decorations, definitely. This is such a great technique, Ashley. I love it with the halo around it, but either was fab. Mandy, I prefer the halo around it, but it's personal choice again. So it's just so you know, if you want the can of white halo around whatever your punched out shape is, make an offset first and use the offset to do the subtract. And then, you know, put your shape within the halo. If you don't want the halo, use the exact same size. Alison's saying, funny that when I first had my scan and cut, I went for a coffee and said, I can make that. <laughs> Definitely. Christine's saying, I like using Cricut's Easy Press for heat transfer vinyl. Yeah, that's, I think, going to be one of my next purchases. And then it might encourage me to do more vinyl projects especially heat transfer because heat transfer vinyl comes in some lovely effects and you know for personalizing you know if you get plain makeup bags or you make a plain makeup bag and you jazz it up with a bit of heat transfer vinyl and personalize things for Christmas or birthdays it, you can just do so much with it you can use an iron I've found if you use a regular iron on a very hot setting you have to be ironing on a surface that doesn't give so I found if I try to do heat transfer vinyl and I'm using an ironing board when you press on with your iron you know how your ironing board gives well mine does I have to press for ages so you need a really hard surface underneath and then give it a good hard press and you I think you have to kind of press it down for maybe maybe 40 seconds something like that um but if you've got the you know a, a, one of the big heat press things you know the proper ones or if you've got the cricket one they're brilliant because they have a timer on and I think cricket tells you how long to put the timer on for the vinyl that you're using so it kind of takes a bit of the guesswork out of it um Susan's saying thanks for the tutorial I understand part of it we'll need to watch it again okay Vicky's saying google search for an svg file of the shape you want e.g I needed a pony last week, got several horses and ponies. Yeah, definitely. Or as I say, I just tend to go to Defont and go and look in the dingbats and, you know, I'll type in pony or horse and see what comes up. But yeah, Jeanette's saying, I'm just using my scan and cut for card. Same here, mostly Jeanette. I mostly just use it for card making or paper craft, but you can use it for so much. I had no steam and also ironed on reverse. Yeah, I do no steam as well. And I do the same, Alison. I hit it from the front and then I either turn it over or turn it inside out, depending on what I'm ironing and hit it from the back as well. But I've just found it might just be my iron. When I press on my, the surface kind of gives, if, if that makes sense. And you don't always get the good contact. So like Mandy's saying there, a wooden chopping board or something that is a solid surface that is not going to be damaged by the heat, um, I've just found works better. So Mandy's saying I use a wooden chopping board for the heat transfer vinyl, but I 
but had to guess how long to hold down the iron. That's what I mean. If you are doing it with an iron, it, it is a little bit of guesswork unless there are any instructions with the heat transfer vinyl that you buy. Sometimes you'll get some instructions and it'll say, you know, hold for 40 seconds or whatever. Sometimes it doesn't. And again, the other thing is as well, some vinyls are what they call warm peel and some are cold peel, which basically means if it's cold peel, when you've hit it with the iron, you've got to wait till it's cold before you peel away the shiny surface. Other vinyl is what they call warm peel, so you can peel it away while it's still warm. So it is a bit of a minefield, really, um, vinyl. But once you get playing with it, it's good fun and as I said, it can go on so many different surfaces. Charlotte's saying, I found a nice butterfly for a flip card. Marcia's saying, must go. Thank you so much, Ashley. This has been really helpful. You're welcome, Marcia. Thank you. Cricket's iron mat is wonderful and not expensive. Okay. So what, you, you iron on the mat rather than on an ironing board. Is that what you mean, Christine? I can have a look at that maybe then if I decide to go down the easy press route. Vicky's saying a silicone pressing sheet on top and under really helps distribute the heat. Okay, I'll tell you what I've used in the past as well, Vicky, If because I've not got a silicone mat, but that's another thing, obviously. All these things help, don't they, to give you a better result. I've used um, kind of like a, a parchment paper, but again, sometimes that has a you know, a surface on it that you maybe don't want to hit with an iron. So I tend to use like a piece of um, quilting cotton or something like that. But yeah, it, the right tools for the job always make the, the, the outcome great, don't they? Alice is saying, what is the best vinyl to use for beginners? I honestly don't know. I've got a stack of vinyl and I bought it from a local vinyl sign writer who... Um, uses only outdoor vinyl and he let me buy like his roll ends. I've also got some really old vinyl, which was puzzles, which, you know, I don't know. I, I know sometimes it can, it can, it can degrade. So that might not even be worth using now, but cricket vinyl seems popular, but I don't know. Is there anybody on here that's got a cricket or used a cricket in the past? Who can say whether the vinyl is easy or not to use with? Yes, iron on the mat, okay. Leslie's saying, I wonder if brown paper would work as we... Yeah, that's the kind of thing, that kind of brown packing paper or like baking parchment, but just make sure it's not got like a waxy surface on it that if you hit it with iron, it's going um, it's gonna to melt. Like I wouldn't use the freezer paper because that's got a waxy surface on it and if you hit that with an iron, you might end up with that waxy surface all over your vinyl. But to be honest, I just tend to get a piece of quilting cotton and put that over the sh over the, the vinyl, the shiny surface, and then iron that. Caroline's saying, you've, won you've once again have delivered an amazing video. Thanks for all your... Oh, thank you, Caroline. You're welcome. Right, so it's three minutes past six. Has anybody got any questions or anything they want me to go over again before we finish? Anna is saying, I buy my stick-on vinyl from Elephant Supplies on eBay. Okay. Sue is saying, I've used Cricut vinyl and never had a problem. Lots of people have got crickets, haven't they? And, you know, again, you look all over Pinterest and type in Cricut vinyl and you'll see loads of stuff that people have done, some amazing things. So, you know, again, and Cricut vinyl, I would think if you... You know, it's probably easy to get hold of. Hobbycraft, I know Hobbycraft sell it. You can buy it in store or online. 
Lisa's saying, thank you, Ashley, another great tutorial. Christine's saying, I like Oracle vinyl and Caesar vinyl. Yeah, I think the vinyl I've got that I bought from my local sign writer is Caesar and or Oracle. But as I say, he's a, he is a vinyl sign writer and I've had it a few years. I just went down and saw him one day and I said, I don't suppose you've got any offcuts that you could sell me. And he literally sold me loads for about £10. I've got quite a, quite a bit of it. Um, and his was on like three foot wide rolls. So I literally had to cut it all down. Alice is saying, thank you, ladies. Quilt shop sell pressing sheets. OK, thanks. That's nice to know. I know where there is a quilt shop. It's not a million miles from me, but probably about 10 miles. So that's worth knowing. Sue's saying... Something about cutting vinyl for wheelie bins. Yeah, I've got it. On the outside of my house, I've got two quite tall silver metal plant pots. They stand, I'd say, maybe two and a half, three feet tall. And my house has a name. So I cut black outdoor vinyl and I put the name of the house on the two plant pots that stand either side of the front door. Mandy's saying brilliant session. Christine is saying, thank you, Ashley. Have to go now. Was really helpful. I've not used vinyl before, but might give it a go. Maria is saying, thanks again. Wonderful. You're welcome. Karen is saying, can we get in touch after this video to set up a time? Karen, yeah, go to the website, applelover53.co.uk and just contact me through the contact page. I'm more than happy to have a chat and see what it is you want. Alison is saying, I got a selection of colours from the river, from that river. Oh, got you. <laughs> Amazon, yeah. <laughs> um, Anna is saying, thank you again for a great tutorial. Heading to my scan and cut to try this now. Okay, let me know how you get on, Anna. Barbara's saying, great tutorial yet again. Ashley, thank you so much. You're welcome, honestly. Uh, Leslie's saying, Ashley, once again, a brilliant, informative video. Thank you. Corrine Collins is saying, thank you. Face is saying, thank you. Alison's saying, love this. Thank you, Ashley. Take care, everyone. Yet yeah, same to you and to your husband, Alison. Susan is saying, thanks, Ashley. Great info. Um, Philip's saying the same. Ms. Maureen, where do you get the font you use with the dingbats, please? Dafont.com. D-A-F-O-N-T, dafont.com. Christine saying your tutorial was wonderful. Oh, and while I remember, I did the draw for the quilt cards from last week and the winner was Patty H, but I've not seen her on here today. So I'll leave the description. I'll leave the info in the description under this video in a little while. So if she comes and watches it, she knows she can claim it. But if she doesn't, if somebody can remind me next week when we're at the Scan and Cut machine um, to remind Patty H that she won the quilted cards. So uh, I'm getting thank yous from Ellen, Alison, Maria. Thank you. You're all welcome. Thank you. Excited to try vinyl. Thanks from me to Dawn saying thank you. See you next week. So there doesn't appear to be any questions. Excuse me. So if nobody has got any last minute questions. And um, I can't see any popping up. I'll give it another minute or two. But then if not, I'm going to say good night to you all and have a safe week his operation has been can oh no but hopefully soon he's having a good week thanks for asking oh you're welcome say hi to him won't you for me oh fancy his operation getting cancelled that's rubbish right i'm gonna have a quick drink and just see if any last minute questions pop up oh jeanette thank you she's saying don't forget the thumbs up I'll put my thing on.